One of the leading stress experts, uh, Dr. David Lewis, uh, compared the brains of commuters with the ones of fighter pilots going into battle. And after five years of research, he discovered that commuters experience more stress than these guys. <laughs> Dr. Lewis also gave us commuter, commuters our own syndrome. It's called commuter amnesia. It refers to the fact that we are so stressed we forget large parts of our journey to work. And the thing is, he found this more with train commuters than with people who take the car to go to work. Now, why is that? It's very simple. If you're in a car, you're in a sort of extension of your home. Uh, because in a car, you can do anything you like. You don't even have to think. You can even shave or do makeup, just like you would do at home. And a train is completely different. A train is a sort of pre-extension of the workplace. Uh, because the minute you decide to take the train to your work, you have to start thinking. And with thinking, well, your working day starts. But you already know this already. You know this old saying that says, um, if you commute by automobile, you can afford to be an imbecile. But if you commute by train, you have to use your brain. Now, uh, we are with half a million uh, train commuters in the Netherlands. And uh, we are not really aware of all the thinking that's going on. But on the other, on the other side, when I uh, arrived at my uh, destination, at, arrived at my office, I already felt pretty tired at the start of the morning. And I couldn't figure out why. That's that commuter amnesia that Dr. Lewis was talking about. So I decided for one year to be extremely aware of all my thoughts and all my decisions while I was commuting by train. Um, and let me take you through that thinking a bit, uh, thinking process in rough lines. If you commute by train, you will spend, let's say, 45 minutes in a train. What do you want? You want a seat. <laughs> but how do you get a seat? Well, you, if, you, if you make sure that you step in first, you're pretty sure you will get a seat. But how do you make sure that you step in first? Well, you have to make sure that the door of the train stops right in front of you when you're standing on the platform. And a lot of elements come into play while you're doing that. Well, you wouldn't say so, but I'm thinking here of all the elements that come into play thinking that. I'm on the platform. Um, am I on the right position? Yes, I think so, because uh, it's a bit crowded. But on the next stop, I have to switch trains. I have 30 seconds to cross the platform. Uh, and besides, my bike is at the end uh, final destination. It's far east. Uh, of the station, and with this position, I will end up far east as well. Ah, there's the train uh, coming in. Now I have to think of the stopping speed of this train, but not only that, I also have to figure out what is the stopping style of the train driver. Is he going to stop abrupt or smoothly or something in between? I have to think, think, think. Well, if I would be here, <laughs> thoughtless, going to the office, Back to the catching a train uh, again. I have to figure out what is measured because I don't want to end up in an empty uh, spot uh, at the platform. I have to figure out where's the second class compartment because I don't have a first class ticket. I have to figure out, well, the button to stop, uh, to open the doors. If you push it first, then you are entitled to get in first. But are the people around me aware of this informal rule? So you also see me. <laughs> doing a quick social intelligence com train commuting experience scan of everybody on the platform. Well, uh, this is the result. <laughs> um, so I'm getting in first. But do you think that, I'm, uh, that I can stop using my train brain now? Well, you cannot, because this is what you want, a seat. Uh, a seat. Um, to get a seat, your brain train really has to start working. Because it's, what it's doing in a parts of seconds is very quickly striking off a long list of priorities, very detailed priorities. This is my first priority, a seat in the direction, single seat in the direction I'm heading. Well, let's say it's occupied. Uh, well, I don't mind. I'll take the, the, the single seat uh, going backwards. I don't mind because I'm a man. Um, when I'm in a train uh, and it starts to move, so we know which direction we're going, I only see women getting up and then 
turning, uh, turning around. Okay, the, the compartment is filling with people now. I have to think faster, I have to prioritize faster. This is my second priority, it's two seats occupied. This is my next priority, four seats. Let's see, there is a big guy with his legs sitting wide like he's going to a gynecologist, and I will be touching my thigh with his for next hour or so. I'm not gonna do that. The other part is, uh, well, I have to climb over knees and over luggage, and then I have to decide which part of my body I'm going to stick in my fellow traveler's noses. So I'm not going to do that as well. Next priority, first class. I, have, I don't have a first class ticket. So I will be constantly looking out for the ticket man and meanwhile rehearsing my excuse story. I cannot read a newspaper doing that. Next priority, well, here are the steps in the, on the balcony. But not like this, with a newspaper, please. But which newspaper? Preferably a free one, but if there's not, then I'll use my own. And as a sub-priority, the pages are already read. Well, this prioritization goes on and on and on. Now think of the situation where there's a train crossings that, crossings that don't work, or there's a theft of copper wire. In other words, there is a big delay. Then your brain train really has to start working because you have to consider alternatives you have to choose the least delayed option to get to work. But that is not a choice. It's a gamble. A, a station is in fact a casino. These alternatives can, you, can get your brain train really get overheated. Uh, one day I had the options between to go to work to very long delayed uh, possibilities to get there. I gambled on one, but when I arrived at my final destination, I really wanted to know how, whether my gamble had paid off. I thought I won, let's say, 12 minutes. So I was uh, walking up and, down at, uh, up and down at station Amsterdam South, asking people around, have you seen my invisible alternative uh, that I didn't take? Uh, looking out for it, but it's impossible. You cannot figure out what happens to a train that you didn't take. But uh, while I was concluding this, I lost at least 15 minutes, at least. And I still don't know what happened. That is not healthy. Don't do this. Don't use your brain too much. Just go with the flow and roll with the punches. Just um, regard it as an urban adventure and simply take any train that actually moves. Because if you're moving in a train and you're sitting, that's the moment when you can turn off your brain in the train. Thank you. <laughs>